Welcome to episode 220. The fear series continues with how to navigate the fear of success. Welcome to the Be That 1% podcast. I'm your host, James Silvis, mindset specialist and performance coach. And here on the show, I'm going to challenge you to think deeper, commit to greatness, and develop a stronger mindset. You'll hear stories from those who are living life on their terms, and you'll receive strategies that will help you level up. So the question is, are you ready to be your own 1%? Let's get started. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Be That 1% podcast. I'm your host, James Silvis, and today we are continuing our fear series for March 2022. So far, we've already talked about fear of rejection and fear of failure. Today, we're going to be talking about the fear of success. And before I jump into that, I want to restate why I decided to do this fear series. Working with leaders from all over the world, different ages, different demographics, different industries, a common denominator amongst not just leaders, but humans in general is fear and certain types of fears, depending on the industry or the area that these leaders operate in. And these four fears that this fear series is centered around were the common fears that I saw time and time again. And when you do something for a long period of time, you start to see patterns. And those patterns help you create shortcuts, if you will, in your thinking to anticipate and and address a situation. And so for me, being a coach to, you know, high level leaders all over the world, being able to recognize fear language, fear thinking, fear activity, I can pinpoint that, ask questions around it tell them what's going on, share with them, you know, the insights that that are preventing them from rising to their next level, and now we can actually do something about it. If I didn't, one, recognize what fear looked like or what fear they were experiencing, then I wouldn't be able to mention it, and if I didn't mention it, we wouldn't be able to move forward, right? And fear is a common block, blocker of all of things that we say we want in our life, and so I feel, I feel that talking about fear not only helps minimize the noise in our heads, but also gives us um, language to articulate what we're experiencing. And once we know what something is, we can do something about it, right? So um, that is the main intention for building this, this content series here for you. Also, I've created a fear quiz. That's free. Uh, link is in the show notes. So if you really want to understand what fear you most resonate with and you're unsure after listening to these episodes, go take that quiz and that'll tell you exactly what fear you're operating in and also homework to start leveraging your fear, not being controlled by it. Now, if you're listening to this episode, chances are you are a leader who is wanting to increase their influence, their impact. You're wanting to optimize your life or or just get better at whatever it is that you're doing because you are you are centered in growth. Like growth is what you are, you're all about. You want to consistently evolve and learn and challenge yourself. And I commend you for that, respect you for that. And so my job is to continually refine what I'm seeing out there in the quote unquote field and bring that to you so that you can have tactical and digestible content to use in your life that can help you in your business, in your personal life. And uh, as leaders, learning these tools, learning the language, learning strategies to help us go from A to B, we start getting results and then we can start duplicating those results with those that we're leading, right? So let's jump into fear of success. What is it? Most people, and I say most people, a lot of people that I tell this fear to, one, don't even realize that it's a fear and then Two, once they, they start seeing how this can show up and operate as fear, then all these other thoughts and epiphanies start coming through. And so it, it's common that if you hear fear of success and not know that that's actually a thing, it is a thing. And the definition is basically if you're fearing success, you're fearing change. 
the change that will come from achieving the success or the achievement and whether you're up for it or whether you can sustain it. So you set a goal to you know, grow your company to a certain size. And part of you is excited and part of you is really nervous. You're like, well, what if I get there and now I have more responsibility? Now I have less time with my family or, you know, maybe I'll make more money. And then if I make more money, then I have to spend more money or people will want more money from me and I won't be able to distinguish who's friends and who's not. And now the quality of my life suffers. That is fear of success. You have a goal and now you begin fearing, what will I change? Well, I have to change who I am to get that goal. And will I like that? Um, what is it going to do to how I've, how I'm currently operating in my life? And if I do get it, what's expected of me now that I've achieved it, right? So let's look at some of the common uh, types of thinking if you're operating in fear of success. One thing that may happen here is that you set goals that may seem challenging to other people but you know that they're not challenging to you. So let's say you have an income goal and you say that to somebody who you know either makes less than you or, or maybe you don't even know that maybe it's just a, it's a solid number and you you tell someone that they're like, Oh, that's, that's really cool. And so it seems like it's challenging from the outside because it's a healthy amount of challenge to most people. But for you, it's not really, that big like if you just continue what you're doing you're automatically gonna achieve that so you just set it as a goal to have a goal to have a direction but it's not stretching you it's not forcing you to think different to innovate so you kind of just set goals that keep the status quo that just keep rolling into the next thing you can stall on opportunities for fear of the expectations or pressure that may come from the opportunity so someone comes to you with uh, an opportunity to work with a client or they come with you to um, this position to bump your pay or um, there's a, just a collaboration that you can do with somebody else. And you're like, well, I don't know about that. Like, what, what, what is it going to lead? What do they expect of me? And am I going to, what if I do succeed at that? Then what, what's after that? And like you start thinking three to five to seven steps ahead and that causes you to stall, which then can lead to you not, getting that opportunity because someone just passes on you or uh, if you do say yes it it can kind of taint the situation because maybe too t- too much time has gone by and now there are other factors that that weren't there before you can also create a parachute clause in your commitments so that you have a way out if things don't go your way okay yeah yeah I'm committed to this income goal to this uh, this physical goal or to this relationship goal 100% And then as you start realizing all the work that it takes to go into that goal, to make it a reality, you start to question whether you want to keep that up. Is this person going to keep expecting me to show up this way? Is my company going to continue to expect me to produce at this level? Do I want that? And that doubt starts to open up possibility of maybe I don't. And then you start finding other things to do instead of the work that you were tasked to do or that you originally committed to that then unravels all of that production that you've been putting into the, to the goal or to the outcome that you're looking for. This is a, I, I had this appear with one of my clients and he didn't know that he was doing it until we, I started questioning and digging deeper. And once we figured this out, it made sense why he got to, let's say, 60, 70% of his goal attainment, but then fell off because he started he started correlating the pain that he was experiencing through just the struggle of achieving that goal and started compounding that of like, okay, well, if, I'm, if it takes this much to get to 70%, what's it going to take to get from 70% to 80 and then 80 to 90 and then 90 to 100? And the more he kept thinking about it, the more he started stalling and waiting. And, and then that stalling and waiting led to not acting. And then those goals kind of just fell apart. And that wasn't just one time. That's been multiple times in many different areas of his life, not just in business. So it was really key to, to hone in on that. And now that he has the awareness, now he can catch himself when he starts to do that activity or, or behave in that way. Uh, the next thing is, if you're operating in fear of success is you can experience excessive amounts of pressure 
uh, or the anxiety that comes from the pressure you feel to repeatedly surpass or outdo yourself and others. I just crushed this income goal or this uh, sales goal that my, my company tasked me with. Well, man, uh, are they going to want me to do that again this month? Or I just l- launched a new program and it went really well. Now, do I expect that from myself again, knowing all that it took to get there, right? And we can kind of obsess over that. Well, what are people going to think? What am I going to think of myself if it's not as successful? And then it kind of can bleed into fear of failure and letting other people down. And then it can even pull in from fear of rejection uh, with the perfectionism of it having to be a certain way and to uphold a specific standard so that you're viewed a certain way. And so the, the crazy thing about these fears is that there are a few qualities that make them stand alone, their own thing, but there's more similarity than there are differences. And so you may start in fear of success and then go further and realize maybe it's fear of failure or maybe it's both. You know, it's not that you're one or the other. You can experience both. Um, it's just typically I find that uh, it's more one or the other, which is why I'm giving them individually their own episode. So the next thing uh, you can experience in fear of success is you may lean to substance abuse or other self-destructive behaviors that can distract you from pursuing a goal or opportunity. It may be overwhelming the pressure that you feel that either you put on yourself or or you think other people have of you or the actual reality of the pressure that other people are putting on you. And it can be a lot. And if you don't have anyone to talk to, or you don't have the words to articulate what is happening to you or inside of you, then it can be easy to to pop a pill or to open a drink or to do something else that kind of takes your mind off of that pain. And uh, this can escalate very quickly to um, an addiction or to something even worse. So really just paying attention to what happens inside of you when you're in certain environments around certain people or in specific tasks. You know, life is is really just about developing awareness of what's working and what's not working. Not to judge that process, which is what we all fall victim to, but really just to see it for what it is. is. Is this helping me or is this not helping me? And sometimes what's not helping us We've convinced ourselves that it is helping us because it's helping us avoid pain. But pain is a great teacher. Pain actually teaches us more than pleasure. And that's not a challenge to throw how much pain can you experience. It's more so when you're having that pain, if you're running from it, then it's only going to get bigger and it's only going to control you even more, which may lead to you leaning on substances that you may not, (laughs) that are not good for your health, not good for sustainability, not good for your clarity, not good for your, your, the power that's inside of you for you to be able to cultivate that. So really cultivating this awareness through listening to these podcasts, journaling, talking to friends about what you're experiencing, trusted sources um, that can help you build frameworks to, to navigate these fears successfully and effectively. And lastly, fear of success this type of thinking can manifest as the fear of the opinion others may have if you do succeed. How are other people going to see my triumph? How are they going to view when I actually follow through with this and hit it? Are they going to judge me even more? Are they going to think that I'm a sellout? Are they going to now start, um, you know, distancing themselves from me or, or whatever the story is in our heads? Like this is a real snapshot of someone who is operating in fear of success. And for a, for a, a long time in my own life, fear of success was very, very active. It was, you know, set the goal setting specifically of setting challenging goals that seem challenging to other people, but wasn't really challenging to me. It wasn't forcing me to dig deeper. And the moment I realized that when I set goals, one, it has to challenge me, but two, it has to be in alignment with me. And that's another important factor I don't think a lot of people think about when they set goals. Most people, I think, set goals out of pressure of what other people expect of them rather than what they truly want. 
And if you want to win at life, it's all about listening to what's inside so that you can manifest that outside. And you only can do that when you're silent, when you reflect, when you journal, when you ask hard questions and struggle and wrestle with the answers. Um, that's the only way, in my opinion, to, to become truly resilient is by cultivating that from within. So that's fear of success. Let's talk about some homework items, right? So two things here, nothing too crazy. I think first would be starting uh, a list, take inventory, basically, of how you cope with fear. And this could be fear of success or any of the previous fears. But how do you, when fear comes up, what do you do? Do you eat? Do you drink? Do you watch TV? Do you blame? Do you attack others? Do you withdraw completely and go numb? It's important for you to know that because that is a strat that is a strategy you've cultivated, a pattern of thinking and behaving that you've adopted because you find some value in it. And until we look at it with a microscope and say, is this really serving me? Or is this just an illusion that it's serving me? And we start getting into the nitty gritty that we can actually start moving our lives forward rather than repeating the same um, situations in our life that may not be serving us. Now, if we're repeating successes in the way that we want to succeed, then hey, that's, that's working. Keep that going. We're talking in the frame of uh, creating negative situations or disempowering uh, moments that don't serve you and that you don't want, right? So start by doing that. Just take inventory, maybe a couple of journal sessions uh, a week, maybe even after this podcast. Um, if you're driving, you can even audio note this to yourself. Or if you're listening at home while you're cleaning, just pause for a moment and just ask yourself a few questions. Like, what do I do when I am afraid? <laughs> this is really helpful to know because if you know how you do it, then you might be able to pick up on when someone else is doing it, which means you create an opportunity to have a conversation that can change their life. And if you're a leader, you know, life is about creating more of those moments, both for yourself and for others. Then the second thing is, what is your success strategy? You know, if, if a big chunk of success is fearing that you won't be able to sustain it, then knowing that success is a strategy, not just something that happens from pure luck, can give you the confidence of, one, being able to repeat it, and if you can repeat something, then you can sustain something. Or that if you have a strategy that got you to a certain level of success, but maybe it's not what you thought it was, or it's it, it you don't want it as much as you used to think you wanted it, and now you want to scale back, you have components that you can start to tweak to fit whatever it is that you're wanting in your life. But if you don't know how you do something, then you're not gonna know what to dial up or what to dial down according to your preferences. So write out a success moment in your life, a goal that you've achieved, uh, a position that you've accepted, a client that you acquired, a opportunity that you said yes to and it, and it went really well, and really challenge yourself to come up with what were the key components that helped that become a success, both from my, like what I did internally, maybe how I thought, what I was feeling, um, what thoughts I kept in my mind, how I was talking to myself, and then, or who, who was in my environment, who was helping me do this, what were the, uh, the, what were the action items, who did I talk to, what questions did I ask, what, um, what skills did I have to cultivate? And when you start asking those questions, you're going to start to see a pattern that helped create that outcome. And that is a strategy that you can continue to use. It's a strategy you can share so that you can scale your impact, your business, your, um, your skill set. And I think that that'd be very valuable for you, uh, to be able to tweak as needed. So that's fear of success. Sit with this, think about it, meditate it, journal, journal about it. And once you do the homework, then start sharing this with those you interact with, whether that's sharing them this sharing with them this episode, or it's you talking about what you've gathered from this. Either way, it's going to be a helpful thing for you to to be able to learn this at a deeper level, and for others who are hearing this maybe for the first time, now you're giving them language 
that they can use to understand themselves at a deeper level. All right. So much love. Thank you for being a part of this community. Thank you for tuning in each week to listen to this. And another reminder to go check out that fear quiz, see what fear most resonates with you and go out there, be your own 1% and make the impact you imagine yourself making. All right. Much love. I'll talk to you soon.